it's funny, I, you know, as I said, I started working again, and there's, um, it's an office building, and so there's, you know, a men's bathroom. You go in, and there's five or six stalls, and there's multiple sinks and urinals. And um, it's crazy how when I go to uh, use the bathroom, I'm, I'm sort of uh, very conscious, maybe overly conscious, I don't know, I don't remember how I was like before, but very conscious of whether the man who left the stall just went and washed his hands, whether we used soap or whether just with water or with nothing and then walked out the door. And, and I guess I'm like that because I think about, you know, my time in prison and how hygiene and, you know, was, was of the utmost importance because it wasn't just about washing your hands for you. It was going to touch a computer that somebody else was going to use or a phone. And so people would check you. People would make sure. You know, in my case, you know, I always wash my hands anyway, but uh, people, if, if you didn't wash your hands, someone's going to say something. You're going to get warned, you know, like, yo, my man, wash your hands when you get out of the bathroom, you know, you're not here alone, right? So a matter of respect. And uh, so I find myself looking at that and I think back to something I witnessed um, in my first year at FCI Allenwood, you know, there was this one uh, child molester who, um, who every time he left the bathroom wouldn't wash his hands, he just walked straight out. And at one point, uh, there was a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of guys, uh, you know, gang members went and had a talk with him. And they basically said, uh, if we ever see you, you know, doing it again, walking out of the bathroom without washing your hands, uh, we're going to deal with it, you know. And so it happened again. And once, you know, once you're on the radar like that, everybody's watching. They're going to have people watch you. And so this motherfucker, he walked out of the stall and he walked right out of the bathroom. And within two minutes, they had him back in the bathroom stall and they were literally crushing his head on that, on that steel toilet seat. I mean, this guy was in a bad way when they carried him out of there, you know. He was, uh, he was a, his head was a mass of blood. I mean, I never saw him again, so I don't know what happened to him. You know, obviously he wouldn't be brought back on the unit, but, you know, I don't know if he lived or if he died or who the hell knows. So, you know, something like that just stays with you, right? And so how? When I go to the bathroom, I'm looking at other people, I'm checking whether they're washing their hands. You know, it's it's.